After 35 years of preaching the gospel to hundreds of millions in Africa and witnessing 72 million people making commitments to turn their hearts to Jesus, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke and Christ for All Nations are now preparing to proclaim the gospel in America. I'm an evangelist for over 40 years, especially in Africa. But I have seen how the gospel of Christ has shaken whole nations. And because of that, I am an incurable believer. I believe what I have seen God do there, He can and will do in America. And now is the time. Beginning in Orlando, Florida, at the Amway Center Arena this September 27th and 28th, Reinhard Bonnke will visit cities across the United States, partnering with local churches to invite Americans to embrace the good news that Jesus offers this troubled world. We need love, we need peace, we need joy, we need a living, and we need eternal life. In a time when there seems to be so much bad news in the nation, Reinhard Bonnke and Christ for All Nations believes this is a crucial time to bring the good news of Jesus Christ from coast to coast across America beginning this September. And people say, wait a minute, something happened in me. It's as if a black cloud has lifted and light is shining into my soul. I've heard people so many times say it. This is the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is indeed good news. His name is Jesus! For more information on Reinhard Bonnke and the Good News Crusades, visit whatgoodnews.com.
education has dropped, abortion is higher than ever, and crime has expanded beyond the weak. Families are being destroyed, they work for one another as non-existent. We need to act, and we need to act now. The United States of America has encountered a problem and needs a solution. We need a solution.
join me right now in welcoming for the very first time to the platform evangelist Reinhard
This is not the day of damnation. This is the day of salvation. And we will use this wonderful day to preach the gospel. And the Lord will fulfill his word. Amen. I told, talked to you about the, this book that describes this vision. But if you want to see the miracle that happened that day when God spoke to me to come to America, it's a DVD that goes together with it. It's a documentary. Somebody had a camera there when that man started to breathe. <laughs> oh, Jesus is wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy to be here and I thank God that you are here and we are going to see God's power in action.
something. We all know that our nation is in desperate need of revival. Amen. And I'll tell you what, the solution is not coming from the White House. Amen. We're not going to fix this nation at the polls. We're not going to fix it through humanitarian efforts. There is only one thing that will save the United States now, and it is a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our land. The gospel of Jesus Christ is still the power of God unto salvation. Amen. So what I want to ask you to do today is to invest in a movement. Somebody invested so that you could be here tonight. In fact, we haven't asked anybody that's here to contribute anything to this meeting so far. Have we asked you to give anything? No. Somebody else gave so that you could be here tonight. Yeah. And I'm aware that there are some of you here who are not even believers in Jesus. You know what? I'm not asking you for your money. We have not come to take your finances. Hallelujah. Amen. Just enjoy the service and listen and open your heart and your yes. Amen. Amen. Those of you that come from other churches, you know we have close to 350 different churches and parachurch ministries involved. Those of you that come from other churches, we want you to put your tithe first into your local church. But if there's somebody who really senses that they want to be a part of this move of the Holy Spirit that I believe is going to sweep across this nation and touch this next generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want to ask you to give something generously from your heart today in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says this, that whatsoever good any man does, the same will he receive yes. from the Lord, whether That's he be bound or free. Yes. Here is the moral of, this, of the scripture. That if you make something happen for something else, somebody else, God will make that good thing happen for you yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. And I pray that tonight, not only would you give, but you would receive. Yes. And that salvation would come to this nation as it's come to so many in other places. Amen. Do you agree with me? Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, thank you so much that we can be here tonight gathered in your name. Father, I ask that as we've spoken, that you would confirm that word, Lord, that this will be the beginning of a movement of your Holy Spirit that stretches from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea from north to south and east to west. And Father, I thank you that every one of us can be a part of that great ingathering of souls, I pray. Father, bless every gift, bless every giver, multiply it, and return it to each and every one, pressed down, shaken to get together and running over. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Jesus sculpted our land with a nail print in his hand. Even in the highest places one can find redemption traces. The cross of Christ is our faith's foundation, a solid rock for our nation. America to Jesus come, be marked by him, not
He had the most amazing story that morning. I said, where were you that day that I prayed over you in the emergency room? He said, I am so disappointed. I am so disappointed. What are you disappointed about? No one came to visit me that day. I was alone for eternity in darkness. And I reached out my hand and I said, never again do you have to be alone in the name of Jesus. That day we prayed together and he accepted Christ in, the, in that intensive care unit. He became a Christian. He became born again. Amen. This is the power of God. You're here today. You have troubles and you have aches and you have pains, but God is here. He can free you. He can raise you up. So we prayed for that man, and his life has radically changed. He's working in the church. He's in a Bible study. He's reading the Word of God. His whole life transformed by the name of Jesus. He's here with you in this audience today. This man that has been raised from the dead in Jesus. So I want to tell you that times of refreshing are here. As it says in the book of Acts, today is a mighty day for the Lord and you. Your life is going to be forever changed as Reinhard Bunke, the evangelist, speaks to you and presents the word of God most clearly. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Trump. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? This is wonderful. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. This is Good News Orlando. Amen. The word gospel means good news. Amen. News. I met a young man and he pointed to my Bible and he said to me, he said, uh, I, don't. I don't like your Bible because I'm 17 and this book is 2,000 years old. I, I don't want to live by the rules of this old book. Well, I said to him, it was in the middle of the day, I said, just look up and look at the sun. I said to him, the sun is old, but I never heard anybody say, I am cold because the sun is old. <laughs> it is true, the sun is very old, but the sun is still very hot. <laughs> and this book is very old, but it is very powerful. It is So, you cannot call this news. This book is 2,000 years old. How can you call it news? He said, I call news what I have on television uh, at, uh, at noon. That is news. This, he said to me, you at best could call good history, but not good news. I said, let me tell you this. The Bible, of course, is historical, but it is not history. Listen, when the gospel is preached, it happens. When the gospel is preached, it becomes an event. And while it is preached, something happens and people jump up and say, something happened to me. I met Jesus Christ as my Savior. All my chains have fallen off. Amen. Something has happened to me. Good news, Orlando. Good news this evening. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 
praise God. I have a powerful evangelistic message. I will be as concise as I possibly can be and to the point. And after the prayer of salvation, we are still going to pray for the sick. Hallelujah. You always do that. Hallelujah. Because Jesus preached and he healed. Yeah. Amen. And he told us to do the same. Hallelujah. We preach the gospel. Preaching, teaching, healing. We continue the ministry of Jesus this way. So be ready to receive everything you came for. The Lord has given me a word here for this evening from Luke chapter 20. It's the story of the Pharisees who tried to trap Jesus. They tried to catch him. They wanted to get him out of their way with a very special question. And I quickly read these few verses to you, and then I will explain. Uh, Verse 20 in Luke chapter 20. Uh, so they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be righteous that they might seize on his word in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Then they asked him, saying, Teacher, here it comes. We know that you say and teach rightly, and you do not show personal favoritism, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, why do you test me? Show me a denarius. There was a coin in those days. Show me a denarius. Whose image and inscription does it have? They answered and said, Caesar's. And then Jesus said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. What a powerful and wonderful reply. So let me just set the picture here. These Pharisees wanted to trap Jesus because they hated him. He was more popular than them. My Bible also tells me that because of envy, they delivered him. It's amazing what jealousy can do. And they must have worked for months on, on a trap. How can we catch Jesus? How? We need a, a, we need a, a, a waterproof trap. And then they had one. They said, when Jesus is surrounded by many people and a number of Roman soldiers are in earshot, close by, then we will ask him the following question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Now, Caesar was the Roman emperor and at that time, Rome was occupying Israel and the Israelites hated the Romans. They suffered under them. They were oppressed by them. So they, if Jesus would have said to them, yes, pay your taxes to Caesar, all the people would have been very unhappy with Jesus. That would have been a big advantage for them. But if Jesus would have said the opposite, Caesar. The Roman soldiers would have approached him because anybody speaking against Caesar had committed treason. They would have grabbed him and put him away. That was the trap. And now the day had come. Jesus was 
teaching to a big crowd of people, and here came the spokesman, that old Pharisee. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus sniffed something. <laughs> and he said, let me, has anyone got a coin here? Always amazes me that Jesus had to borrow a penny to illustrate <laughs> his sermon. Has anyone got a coin here? And they brought a denarius. So Jesus said, whose image and inscription do you read on this? Is here on this denarius, this coin? And they said, Caesar's. And here comes the mighty word of God. Jesus said, listen carefully. He said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and render to God what is God's. Now, let me explain. Let me explain. The coin belonged to Caesar because it bore Caesar's image. Is that right? Right. But Jesus said with the same breath, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what is God's. And suddenly the Holy Spirit touched my heart and my understanding and I saw something I've never seen before. I said, wow, the coin belonged to Caesar because it bore the image of Caesar. But we must give to God what belongs to God. And what belongs to God? God created us into his own image. We are bearers of the image of God. And therefore, God has a righteous, a most righteous claim on every human being. Wow. We must give to God what belongs to God. We must give ourselves to Jesus Christ. Until the image 
of God is almost gone. Almost gone. Or maybe gone already. I don't know. But Satan will not give up. He keeps hammering and landing blow after blow. One man was asked why he got drunk all the time. And you know what he said? He said, I'm drinking every day because I want to forget my wife. <laughs> I don't know what kind of wife he had. Oh, ah, this is terrible enough. And then he walks down the road, goes into the pub, fills himself up, and walks home drunk. And when he, uh, when he knocks on his own door and his dear wife opens, he sees his wife double. <laughs> Instead of having one problem, he now has the two problems. never yet solved one problem, but it has created millions of problems, stroke after stroke after stroke, and drug addiction, what do you get at best, a dream, a chemical dream, I call it a chemical dream, it's not worth it, it's destructive, it destroys Hallelujah. because the Bible says that the devil is a destroyer. Yes, yes. He is a murderer. Oh, he is a killer. That's what he is. That's what he is. But thank God, Hallelujah. Jesus has seen our situation Hallelujah. and our condition. Hallelujah. 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 I could go here today for you. You know, you know what Jesus did when he came into this world? Hallelujah. I would like to, to stick with my picture here with a sledgehammer coming down. He got in front of it. Jesus intercepted that. When it came down in full force, and while intercepting it, his own hand was pierced. But he wouldn't let go. Jesus has the power to stop every hammer. Jesus has the power to deliver from all torture, mental torture. I have, I've been around for many years and I've seen very many people. Sometimes I, they came to me in chains. It's a tragic thing to see that. But then I discovered one other thing. There are not just chains of that sort, they are also, there's also a chain in the brain. But Jesus died for us. He intercepted that hammer. He gripped it. He gripped it. He held it. And stops the devil if we seek refuge in him. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be. He was nailed to the cross for me. Sin shall have no dominion over you any longer. Any longer. Jesus is our Savior. Amen. There is no other Savior in this world. You can go where you want. You can search every religion on earth. But I tell you one thing. Hallelujah. 
No religion has a Jesus who died for the sins of the world at the cross of Calvary. Nobody can take the cross away from us Christians. Jesus is the Savior. There is no other Savior. He will intercept that hammer. He will deliver you from bondages, from compulsions, from fears, from tears, and all this fortune things. Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves. Come on, say amen. in Germany one day and afterwards in a, in a meeting similar to this one afterwards a gentleman came to me and he said to me I don't believe that Jesus is the son of God I don't believe that the Bible is the word of God but I'm also a preacher <laughs> you know by nature I'm a curious man <laughs> so I uh, I asked a couple of questions. I said, how do you, how do you preach? What do you preach? What do you say? I said, let me give you an illustration. Here comes a married couple on the point of divorce. Their hearts are bleeding. It's as if the knife sticks in their hearts. They suffer great pain and they come to you for counseling. What do you do? I asked him. What do you say to them? Do they come? You, you counsel them and they go back home again with the same pain? Oh, no, 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 he said. You know what I do? I just calm them down. And he kept repeating, I calm them down. I calm them down. And when he said it for the fourth time, I woke up. I said, Mister, a man on a sinking ship doesn't want to be calmed down because he's going down already. I said, a man on a sinking ship needs three things. Number one, he needs rescue. Number two, he needs rescue. Number three, he needs rescue. And Jesus is that savior. He's the only one who can save us from the clutches of hell, of sin, and of Satan. Say amen. amen. I said to this man, now I want to tell you what happens when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes by and he sees a sinking ship and he sees that couple just about to go under. I say, I tell you what Jesus is doing. The Bible says his arm extends. I said, what Jesus is not doing is this. When he sees somebody struggling on the sinking ship, he doesn't dig in his pocket for a handful of Prozacs. <laughs> he doesn't throw the Prozacs over to the ship and say, take three each immediately and perish in peace.
He pulls them over to himself. He looks into their eyes and this is what he says to them. Because I live, you shall live also. Jesus saves. He is the Savior. He is the Savior. Amen. Jesus saves. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can look where you want. You will not find any other Savior. It is Jesus. And this Jesus is here. And you are here. And something wonderful is going to happen here this evening. Jesus will save you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, listen. If you receive Jesus into your heart, he's offering himself to you. If you say yes, and say, I want to receive you, Jesus. You died for me. I want you to be my savior. That's why you came into this world. I want you to save my soul. Something wonderful happens. Something wonderful happens. What Satan has defaced, what Satan has wiped out, that image of God in you, the Bible says, he will restore your soul. The sheep is in the jaws of the lion. 
And thus says the Lord, if one ear of the sheep still sticks out of the mouth of the lion, and one leg on the other side still sticks out of the mouth of the lion, I will save you. I will save you. I will save you. You know, some people think God can never save them because they have gone the wrong way for too long. I tell you this, he's calling you tonight. Hallelujah. If you still have got one ear with which you hear Reinhard Bonnke preach the gospel tonight, and if you still have got one knee that you can bow before him, then do it now. Jesus will save you. He is the Savior. And He will save you as well. What wonderful, wonderful Jesus we have. And I'm pleading with everyone not to let this moment and this opportunity pass by. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Today, if you hear his voice, open your heart. Jesus is calling you. Jesus. Jesus. And he said to me, as he met me, I'm not preaching this gospel because, you know, long ago, I've done all my studies, and now I know how to run a meeting. This, this is not a performance. I'm not a pulpit performer. I'm a prophet of the word of God. God is speaking. Tonight is your moment. Tonight, right now, yes. is your moment. Wherever you sit, right up there, anywhere, this is your moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said to one young man, I said to him, when are you going to receive Jesus as your Savior? He gave me a, a reply I've never forgotten. And what happened as a result of it in my own heart, I never forgot. He said to me, I'm 20 years of age. And in my country, life expectancy for men is 18. So I still have got 60 years to think about it. He was smart, wasn't he? <laughs> but he was wrong. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me something I never forgot. And I feel I must share that with you. I said to him, young man, listen to one thing. The border to eternity is never ahead of us. It always runs next to life. And it can be stepped over by anybody, anytime, old or young. The border to eternity is not ahead of you, young people. It is runs parallel to life. That's why the Bible doesn't say you should think about it and you should receive Jesus Christ tomorrow. I tell you why the Bible doesn't say that. 
It doesn't say that because nobody of us here knows whether we have a guaranteed tomorrow. But I tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says today. The Bible says now. Now in Jesus' name. I'm pleading with you. Come and receive Jesus as your Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in one way, it's only one step away from eternity. All right? We go back into life. But now, right now, it's only one step away from Jesus. Eternal life and salvation. Just one step away. Hallelujah. My question is not, don't you, don't you want to receive salvation? No. My question is, how can you stay away from such a wonderful Jesus? Don't stay away. Come to him. He calls you. He loves you. He loves you. If I if I had a chance to do that, I would do it here tonight. I would put my arm around your shoulders and I would say, why don't you come to Jesus? It's my honor to help you, to bring you to him. He will save you and come and live in your heart. This wonderful Jesus, he will restore yes. his image in your life. Yes. Redemption means everything has come into harmony. Everything is singing and everything is swimming. Swinging. This day is the day of salvation. Yes. Are you ready? You know, in Germany, what we call such Christians, we call them submarine Christians. Christianettes. <laughs> submarine Christians. On Sunday, if they are in church, they sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Come on. But Sunday night, they dive down. <laughs> For Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they are cruising so at great depths. Awesome. <laughs> if you meet them in the week, you never guess they are Christians. They cheat like the world. Foul jokes like in the world. Everything Come on. just like the world. But Saturday night, midnight, gloom, 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 gloom. <laughs> Come on. I challenge everyone here. Don't be a submarine. Be an aircraft carrier for Jesus. Say one more word about backsliders. Man, I've been thinking a lot about it. You can guess it. Come on. Backsliders. I don't know why they always have to slide away from Jesus. Why, for a change, can't you slide away from the devil? Somebody said to me, have you ever got doubts, Reinhardt? Have you ever got doubts, 
I said, yes, I have got doubts. What? You have doubts? You're a man of faith, now you say you've got doubts? No, I said. I, I have doubts about my doubts. <laughs> but I have faith in the word of God. Why always doubt the word of God and believe the lie of the devil? Today it will change. Come on. Jesus is here. Yes. His arms are wide open. And he's ready to save you now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is here. Jesus. He's touched Jesus. Many, many hearts. Jesus. And it, I would be greatly honored to lead you to this wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive it? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's bow away. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your presence. And I thank you that you are ready and willing to save, to set free, Jesus, to restore every soul whom Satan has untarged with a big hammer for so long. Oh Jesus, I pray that you may save them now. And you have said, he who comes to me, I will under no circumstances refuse. I thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You are here saving those who want to be saved. While all eyes are closed, I want to ask, who is here tonight who wants to say, I want to receive this wonderful Jesus. I want him to come into my heart and into my life. I want him to restore my soul. If you want to receive Jesus and you want me to pray for you, just lift your hand that I can see it and pray for you, wherever you are. Just wave your hand like that. I may be, I will be able to see it much better. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. And just wave your hand wherever you are, wherever you are. God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah, there's joy in I tell you what we will do. I would really love to pray with you. And this is how we normally do it. I would like to, everyone to stand, please. And then the next step is this. All of you who want to receive Jesus as your Savior, and you want me to pray for with you the prayer of salvation. You raised your hand or didn't raise your hand, but you still want Jesus yeah. as your Savior. Please come forward. Jesus. Just come forward. We're going to pray right now.
upstairs. We'll, we'll take a, a few more minutes for them to make it all the way down. So please, just keep coming. Just keep coming. This day is a day of salvation. This day is a day of salvation. There's room at the cross for you. circumstances refuse. They are still coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. We sing it one more time. Jesus is now here. 
to give you the proof that his word is true. The rod of the oppressor will be broken. Hallelujah. The hammer of the devil will no more land blocks. Jesus will forgive your sins and you will become a child of God. Hallelujah. A lamb of the good, a lamb of the good shepherd. Amen. So now we are going to pray. I'm asking all of you to close your eyes and lift your hands if you can manage. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Sentence for sentence, loud and clear. And I'm asking everybody to pray this prayer with them in support of those who pray it here in front. Because now, heaven is open. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. This is your entrance into the kingdom of God. repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I have heard your word and I come to you just as I am. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood.
your address, please, because we would like to follow you up and stand with you in this new life with Jesus Christ. It's, 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 a, it's a new lifestyle. It's a blessed life indeed. And you will be very, very happy. So don't be shy to complete that car. And if anyone wasn't able to come forward, there are many counselors among the people. They will give you this booklet as well. And you may take it and then just give that card to one of the counselors. We want to make sure. I want to make sure that hell will, that hell will be empty and heaven will be full.
This book that I hold in my hand is not just a historical record of things that happened long ago for educational purposes. This book is meant to lead us to God himself and to teach us about the character and the nature of the God that we serve. And my Bible says that when Jesus met this leper, he looked upon him and he was moved with compassion. I want you to know something tonight, my friend. If you are here tonight and you are sick in your body, you are troubled in your mind, you are oppressed by demons, you are, you are depressed and oppressed, I want you to know something, my Jesus has compassion on you tonight. Amen. How many of you tonight believe that God has the power to heal your sickness? Let me see that. Of course, we all believe that He can heal us. We're talking about the God who made the universe with His words. Yes, He can heal you. The question that so many people have is, does He want to heal you? Yes, He does. Does he want to heal me? And that is exactly what this leper said. He said, Lord, if you are willing, then I know you can make me clean. And this story, I believe, was put in the Bible because the Lord knew that there would be many, many others throughout history that would wonder the same thing. If it was God's will to touch them and to heal them and to take their sickness away. And I want you to, to listen to the words of Jesus to that leper. Listen to what he says. I am willing. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My friend, listen to me. Some people have called myself an evangelist monkey, healing evangelists. That's actually a misnomer because we have never healed anyone. Amen. Actually, we are salvation evangelists who also pray for the sick. Why? Because that's what Jesus told us to do. In obedience to his word, we pray for the sick. We have never healed a single person. Amen. There's only one person in this room tonight that is able to heal you. His name is not Ron Harponke. His name is not Daniel Kalenda. If you know this name, shout it out right Jesus. now. Jesus! Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to ask this wonderful worship team, can we just sing hallelujah? I'm talking about the old-fashioned hallelujah. And I'll tell you why we want to sing this, because I want you just to turn your eyes on Jesus. Don't pay attention to the worship team. Don't pay attention to me. For the next five minutes, let's just turn our eyes to Jesus right now. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hearts.
is in this place. Receive right now. Receive right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every demonic spirit of infirmity. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that disease. I rebuke that cancer, and I command it to leave your body. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Be healed of diabetes in Jesus' name. Be healed of stroke in the name of Jesus. Be healed of every mental illness. Be healed of schizophrenia. Be healed of bipolar disorder. Be healed of madness and lunacy and insanity. Be healed of every chemical imbalance in the name of Jesus. Right now I speak to your heart. That man that has heart disease, right now you're receiving a heart transplant. You're receiving a heart head transplant from the hand of Jesus. Be healed right now. Right now, if you are here with HIV AIDS or some other blood disease, be healed in the name of Jesus. I command every infection to leave your body in the name of Jesus. Be healed of goiter. Be healed of, of wounds that will not heal. I command infections to come out of your body right now. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. of your inner ear and you've been you've been deaf and even thrown off balance in that ear 
because of that all of your life right now the Lord is giving you new parts of your inner ear creative miracle taking place right now cataracts are falling off of eyes right now I command every cataract to come off your vision returns to 2020 vision right now in Jesus name I don't declare these things in my name. Yeah. I don't declare these things in Bonky's name. Yeah. I declare them in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The healer, the savior, the deliverer. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you receive that tonight, I want you to shout a mighty Amen. Amen. Now this is what I want you to do. Listen very carefully. Right now, I want you to activate your faith, and I want you to test yourself. Do something you couldn't do before. Come on, if there was pain in your shoulder, begin to move it right now. You'll discover that pain has left your body. If the pain was in your back, test it. If you couldn't bend over, bend. If you couldn't twist, twist. If you couldn't lift your arm, lift it. If you came in a wheelchair, get out of the wheelchair. If you came on crutches, lift the crutches up and walk. If you brought someone blind or deaf, test them right now. You'll discover Jesus has healed them. How many of you have just now received a miracle in your body? Let me see your hands. No, 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 put your hands down, put your hands down. Listen to me. How many of you have just now experienced a miracle? Something has changed. You have been healed this very moment. Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. side of the platform, my right hand, your left hand. Come on, we want to hear what Jesus has done for you. We want to rejoice with you. We want to shake your hand and bless you tonight. Isn't Jesus wonderful?
minutes ago, Jesus gave you new cartilage in your hips and in your knees, and he took away the bone spur <laughs> and all of these things. How God, do you know who has healed you? Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for this miracle, and I bless this woman. God bless you, sister. Go this way, in peace. Come here. Come here.
my elbow hurts or something or I have a headache, but now it's completely gone. Thank you, Jesus. There's no lens, there's nothing. Nothing. So what Wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to let this sink in a minute. So you're telling me that your right eye, this one, was cut in half. Yes. And you can see out of it. Yes. You see me right now? Yes. Cover up the left eye. Cover it with your hand. Do what I do. Catch me. Catch me. Come catch me. Listen, listen, listen. 
Once again, if you still need to be prayed for, if you have not received the manifestation of that healing, we have prayer counselors that are waiting back there. These are people who see the miraculous all the time. In fact, Dr. Chauncey Crandall, who you heard from earlier, is one of them that is back there. They'll pray for you. They'll anoint you with oil, and you will receive from the Lord in Jesus' name. So it's the Porsche uh, or the, the Mercedes-Benz group as you're going out. All these fancy parts confuse me. Come on, let's just lift our hands in the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence, for your spirit, for your power, and for your wonders. And Lord, as we stand here tonight, as one people, we give all the praise and all the glory back to you. You are Lord, you are God, you are the Savior, you are the healer. We worship you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for it. And everybody said, amen. And we look forward to seeing you back here again tomorrow night, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, same place, see you tomorrow.